Welcome back, everybody, to the Something Cafe. <laughs> A peculiar audience we have here today. Um, you will find no other guest more excited to be on the air uh, than the one we have sitting right here. No, this isn't Lars. Lars is a man. If you haven't guessed yet by the similarities in our facial structure, give or take 100 or 200 pounds, then you would not know that this is my mother. This is my mother today on today's episode. Um, look at her. She's so excited. When I first told her, I said, Mom, you're, you're going to come and visit me. That means you get to be on the podcast. You know what she said? Guess. Guess. Do you remember what you said? No. You, you know what she said? She said, with all the excitement in the world, do I have to? A good start to today's episode. Mom, if you'd like to go ahead and introduce yourself uh, with your mouth pointing to the microphone. I'm Mom. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. And how long did it take you to prepare that? Full plane ride. Wow. That's beautiful. Well, you know what I'm going to ask you? Did you... Did you bring your cup? Huh? Did you bring it? Mom, did you bring your cup? Look at that. Mama Dooley sporting... The something cafe mug. What does it go ahead and read what it says on the back right there? I don't know. Okay. Well, let's let her put on her glasses. If chips and salsa were a person, I would not be single. All right. Now, mom, you did amazing. The way you said it, what you said, the way you said what you said. Beautiful. Now let's go ahead and try again. Like we're actually trying to speak into the microphone. <laughs> what? You couldn't hear me? No. If chips and salsa were a person... I would not be single. And who said that? Celestino Dooley. You're damn right. Mom, I Enough love you. with the cussing. I love you. I love you. And that's why today we have a great episode planned. She doesn't even know it. But by the end of this, she's going to be more of a fan than I am of my own podcast. Um, so before we start, obviously, we've already introduced that you're my own mo that you're my mother. Um, tell me, first of all, when were you, when were you born? 1968. 1968. Great. Natural. Um, 1968. So I was born in 2002, right? Mm -hmm. A bit of an age, bit of an age gap there. And, uh, when you were born in 1968, when you were younger, tell me, um, about some of the things that you did when you were a kid that may might not be as common as kids do now. Uh, Grandpa Ivan would and I would go night crawler hunting whenever it would rain. We okay, would go stop. Out. <laughs> yes. What are night crawlers? Uh, worms, big, large earthworms. Okay. And you'd go out when it was raining, uh, just sprinkling, and it was warm and. When it was cool, actually, not cold, and you would, they would come out of the ground, so you would quick grab them before they'd go back in their hole and get them for fishing. And that was fun? That was a blast. It was one of my favorite things to do with Grandpa Ivan. Good. Dew worms. You called them dew worms. Dew worms. Okay. Makes sense. Well, you know, okay, as exciting as that may sound, you won't believe, but Mom also got up to a couple other things. One of the things I wanted to talk about was uh, your favorite game to play as a kid. You know, we have the Nintendo. We have the Xbox. I have Pokemon. I have Lars. Mom had something that none of us had, and probably for, probably for, probably for the better. Tell him, Mom. Well, Aunt Birdie is the one that taught me how to play it. Play what? Mumbly Peg. Say that again. Mumbly Peg. All right, let's just... Let's just let that simmer for a second. Are you are you German? Partially, yes. That's the only way to explain that. Um, Mumbly Peg is something that I've played with my little brother only because our mom told us about it. Now, um, what's the what is the um, 
what's the department that comes and takes kids away from bad parents? <laughs> DCFS. So DCFS, don't, no need breaking down my mom's door. All right. Me and Declan went ahead and played Mumbly Peg ourselves. Mom didn't tell us to play Mumbly Peg, but she did teach us. Um, what is, and now for the four people out there that don't know what Mumbly Peg is, why don't you go ahead and tell them? I need something to, as an example. Um, Got a pen? We have, well, I don't really have, no, no, but, you know, just use your glasses. You would balance a pocket knife on your finger and then flip it and get it to stick in the ground without stabbing your feet. And how does someone win? Um, I really don't know. Okay. We and just did how it. does someone lose? Well, you don't want to get it stuck in your feet or it didn't stick in the ground. It's got to stick in the ground. That's when it what, lands like the, the, this has got to stick in the ground upright. Like this, this, this ladies and gentlemen is what we are dealing with today. National championship mumbly peg winner. My mother. Um, we were not wusses in the eighties. In seventies, we tell them how it is, mom. We were not wusses. <laughs> this generation of kids just are different than our generation. That's good. Um, very, 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 very good, mom. You know, um, you should have answered that call and had her be a guest speaker because they would. Because that was the queen. Of, they would not even hear it. That's that's not how audio works. But that would be the my queen mom of was it. born before microphones. So yeah. well, we had microphones. It, there were well singers. Okay. But speaking of singers, what uh, what was some of your favorite music when you were uh, a wee lass? Like younger or college? Young, or? Yeah, young, college, both. Well, in high school, I liked country music. Oh, dear. Uh, who? Um, I don't know. I don't know artists. I just know songs. That's good. What, what, uh, what, what songs? Whatever was. Uh, it's really, Alabama was a, one of the best okay. bands there were. Yeah, um, that's good. And, um, and Willie well, Nelson, Waylon Jennings. Mm -hmm. Rem, now, remind me where you grew up. <sighs> well, I. I grew up with a Goodfield address, a Congerville phone number, and wow. I went to school in Eureka. Zebra. So look at that, guys. It depends on the day where I tell you I'm from. That is good. You know, we aren't so different after all. I grew up listening to uh, the later hits from Eminem and Dr. Dre, and my mother listened to old Pop Wiggleberry wagging his finger on the vinyl. Mm -hmm. Real nice. Real, 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 Most real nice. Most of the nice. vinyls you have are from me and Aunt Birdie. Yeah. Yeah. They are. Um, but then in college, I listened to different music. Like what? I was more uh, new age, like Depeche Mode, mm. Mm. Nine Inch Nails. Yeah. Um, a little darker. Okay. Phase of life. I gotcha. Were you emo? I wore nothing but black oh, oh, oh. and had pasty white skin Look and dyed black hair and... Tell me about that. What? Well, I just did. Was, no, 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 no. Was was this to rebel against Grandpa Ivan and no? And it Noni? was just cool then. Granted, I mean, probably some of it yeah. was, but it was just okay. cool. Okay, that's 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 real. You had real a hip good. mom. Really, 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 really shows, doesn't it? Uh, speaking of hip, you know, so my name is Celestino, obviously. And the one to name me that was my own mother. Mm -hmm. um, would you like to go ahead and tell them the story of, of why and how you came to naming me Celest uh, Celestino? And while you do that, I'm going to uh, up the input gain on your microphone. Go for it. Um, when I was 13 years old, my grandpa Celestino passed away. And I was sitting on their bed with grandma. And I promised her I'd name my first kid after Grandpa. And what a beautiful story, first of all. Beautiful, beautiful story, Mom. Um, now, something less beautiful. At what point? Okay, so you had given birth to me. Now, what was the time between birth and then you dropping me on my head to give me Tourette syndrome? Um, never did that. But you were stuck in there for a while. Why was I stuck in there? Because you had a big head. I had a big, big head. And what was that head full of, Mom? 
Lots of brains. Absolutely not. It's a straight up lie, and I'm disgusted you lied to my face. I've always said the, um, lots of brains. It, it really it was just the Tourette syndrome hiding in there. It needed some place to burrow, and it decided to take the part of my brain that kept me from uh, being attracted to thinner women. So now I'm only attracted to bigger women. Ain't that right, Mom? I don't think Amen. I would say that. So here's the thing. I have a lot of stories from when I was younger, and- you know, in preparation for this, because I know just how much of a of a talker you are, I could only come up with one story from when I was younger, which is shocking because we've had, what, 21 years to, mm-hmm. to think of stuff. And if you do think of something, go ahead and say it. I can cut mm-hmm. it out if it's too embarrass- <laughs> em- embarrassing. Um, but one of my favorite stories when I was younger is I thought I was a real sly guy. Rocket math. Back in first grade. I thought I was a real sly guy. I thought I was slick. And now I get why I would think that. You look at me and what do you what do you think? Well, my thin frame gives off the evasiveness of a slicked up seal, my brother. All right. So we had this thing in first grade called rocket math. And it was where, you know, the typical kind of stupid exercise you do that I probably couldn't do now if you were to put a gun to my head where you have to solve as many multiplication questions in like a minute. And uh, it really meant nothing. Like it literally meant nothing. But for some reason, I took it upon myself. This was the first incident. This was the first instance that I can remember of myself. Cheating. (gasps) Whoa. Bad boy. That's what my mama raised me. And um, what I would do is when the 60 seconds were up, I would just act like I was scratching my forehead, which I don't know how that would even pass as slick that I would scratch my, in fact, I was probably drawing more attention to myself. Um, I would scratch my forehead and, uh, keep solving questions. Um, and I, I really thought I was slick with it. Uh, and then sooner or later, I believe, uh, it was my teacher. She, she had pulled me aside one day and had asked me, um, are you cheating on your rocket math? And I said, no. And she said again, are you cheating on your rocket math? And then, then I just burst into tears. Like, yeah, I'm cheating on my rocket math. Um, clearly, clearly the criminal life was not for me. Uh, probably for my mom playing mumbly peg when she was younger, while I was doing much more daring things like cheating on multiplication questions. Um, so she gave me this, this letter with her name on it. And she said, when you get home, give this to your mother. I thought to myself, (laughs) oh, stupid, stupid teacher. Why would you give me the letter that has my confession in it? I thought she, I thought, I, I thought to myself, you messed up, Mrs. W. You messed up. My plan that I concocted on the bus ride home was to do the one thing that I never, ever did. In fact, I still don't do now. I thought to myself, I'm going to volunteer to take the trash out. My mother already had some red flags going off in her head because I've never done that in my life and I still don't. I thought to myself, when I get home, I'm going to volunteer to take the trash out. I'm going to keep the letter in my pocket. I'm going to take the trash down to the dumpster and then put the letter in the dumpster. Am I not George Clooney in Ocean's Eleven? That's what, that's what, that's what I thought. Clearly what had um, evaded me was the fact that, uh, that, 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 that phones had been invented. So um, I really didn't think that far. So then what happened on your end when, when that was when that when that had happened well shortly after at lunch she called me and said hey uncharacteristically like celestino he was cheating on his rocket math and i said wow okay well bad boy not a good choice and i said well tell you what why don't you write a note to me that i have to sign and put it in his backpack and let's just do another test on integrity and see if i get that note so she said, that sounds like a plan. So, and I'll say her name because she wouldn't care. I, you can't I, say her I'd rather not. All right. All right. Well, anyway, so she wrote a note in there 
and gave it to him to give to me. And I said, I'll let you know in the morning what he does. Clearly, there were things beyond anything that I could comprehend. Um, And so she did that. So when I got home, finally dropped off, I am obviously very, very nervous, scared, perhaps. And I walk to the house and immediately mom's like, I don't know. You, I said, you, come here. Let's talk yeah, about school today. Yeah. And I was like, okay. <laughs> you know, like me and me and Jimmy went and ate grass and sticks and we did this. We played mumbly peg and blah, blah, blah. And mom was like, okay, cool. All right. Just, just give me your backpack and, and, and you can go off. I was like, no, 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 no. I, I want to put my backpack. I want to do my homework in my room, in my room. Uh, and she implied to, take my backpack and uh she said is there anything in here for me i was like no 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 um and yeah she she uh she had pulled out the letter and that ladies and uh, gentlemen that was about a 20 minute thing though because there was a lot of back and forth of, there was a lot i was of oh you got homework let's sit down and do it i oh, let me was help you with standing that. i was standing my ground yes you were i was standing my ground you kept ma- trying to go back to your room mama didn't raise <laughs> No wuss. Well, apparently, I hadn't raised you to be slick yet. Not uh, yet. I was probably eight. Mm, first grade, so yeah. Seven. Oh, you're, yeah, you'd be like eight, seven or eight. So I clearly didn't back down to the menace, but eventually she she did find it. And then, uh, and then that was the start of my criminal record. Mm-hmm. That was Never lived the, it down after. That was the beginning. Um, a rather, a a rather odd start to, uh, to, uh, because, because clearly after that, I did not try anything again. No, because you had her for two years after. I had her for two years after that, that, that one teacher. And then. Then your brother had her right after that. So that story came up a lot. And I, I just knew like, clearly mom is on a different level of intelligence. I cannot get past her. Moms know everything. No, dad, on the other hand, I probably could have gotten oh, easily. away from it just because. No, because he was the fun parent. Well, I'm not going to agree or dis- disagree to that. But that was really, that was one of the many stories. Um, now, uh, one of the other questions I had was, you know, <coughs> why did you name me a cellist? You know, we already went over over that. Um, go go into who Grandpa Cellist, who... Grandpa Celestino was? Uh, Noni, it's Grandma Noni's dad. And they lived up north. We would spend summers there and every holiday there. And and always were very proud of our Italian heritage. And, and uh, yeah. And he would taught us fun phrases like, mini, mini, pocket, side, it's like, gamba, tita, and pot. And we didn't know what those things meant. We just thought they were cool and would constantly repeat them. And uh, go ahead and uh, say say that one more time, and then tell the people what that means. Uh, mini mini paku sarats la gamba tita pot, and I'm sure it's losing some translation there, but because uh-huh. mind you, I was you know eight, nine, sure. ten, eleven, but it meant uh, lift up your leg and pass gas. Fart, yeah, yeah. And 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 what in what circumstances would you have had to use that? And not just for fun, or exactly. If you got mad, you just say it. Go, but I didn't know what it meant till later in life. I didn't know what it meant till later. Yeah. Um, how did you manage harboring such an amazing child within your belly when you were pregnant with me? How did you manage that? I was so awesome that they had to cut me out of your stomach. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got that. stuck in there, that big old head. And I almost killed the both of us. Yes. I, I almost took us both out. Yep. That's when at they the same time. That's, decided to do emergency C-section. That's where the talent really started. Because I said, you know, I could just I I I could just be a miscarriage, but no, I'm 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 gonna go ahead and take us both out. Clearly that first plan did not work, thankfully. <laughs> I had the umbil- I had the um the uh the umbilical cord wrapped around my neck. Um, which, you know, when I was younger, I thought that loosely had a, something to do with my Tourette syndrome. Probably not since the Tourette syndrome is just an issue with my entire nervous system. Um, yeah, but I think it had something to do with it. Yeah. 
Yeah, it certainly it certainly had something to do with with it. I think. Um, when when did you first know or re like recognize when I had Tourette syndrome? Because clearly, at first, you didn't know what it was. No, your ticks. You had ticks. Like what? I don't know. When you were in like when you were young, I didn't think you were in school yet. You would blink a lot. Maybe when you just got into preschool and school. So not when I was a baby. No, no, you would like blink or. I don't know. I think the final straw before we went to a doctor was you would like randomly play the piano play the in piano. the air. Yeah, just, you would just yeah. be sitting there talking and then play the piano in the air like three times and blinking. Like there, when you would come home from school, I would just be like, just go to your room for a little bit because you couldn't even hardly talk to you because you were twitching and blinking so bad and stuttering. Yeah, the stutter the disfluency. was disfluency. Disfluency. We're not supposed to call it stutter. That's so, what we were told when you were young. Well, that's just stupid. It's stuttering. Um, you were yeah. disfluent. Yeah. I, and, and then we learned the slow, easy speech. And to yeah. sing when we talk. Dumbest thing ever. Because when you have a tune or when you talk slow, you don't stutter. You yeah. sound crazy. I know. Um, that's what we were I, taught. I, yeah, and it worked. The slow, easy. Yeah, okay. It works, but... <laughs> I never adopted it because I don't know. It's just. But we did in home. I mean, we tried. Yeah. <clears throat> when yeah. we would remember, because talking slow is not easy for me. It's not easy for me either. We're Italian. I mean, that's just what we do. Um, yeah, and you know, looking, looking back on it, I think, <laughs> like the, f- the funniest and stupidest thing was that, the school had put me into, into into speech class or something speech you had a speech something. teacher that's i mean that's that's just kind of speech that's just kind of redundant right because to everybody else she was helping people with like kids saying certain vowels wrong or this and it's that all same but for but yeah but from it, it isn't it weird that like a ner- like a nervous system uh disability that is that can never be cured and that's why she was like, "Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring you in and try to f- try to fi- try to fix it." Well, it can be. I mean, it can't be cured, but you can take medicine to calm it down. We just chose never no, to no, do that. But, but she would teach yeah, you ways to guess. to minimize the know. stuttering I, by the slow, easy speech. I just, I, I, I always thought it was odd because I don't know. Like I knew it wasn't though because I had a teacher and well, yeah, because it's like who <laughs> is is one of the most everyone knows he's an announcer and Eureka and everybody knows of him. And he had a really bad stuttering and he had a very distinctive way to talk because he would talk like this whenever. And I, we always thought it was just a, a accent, but no, he was talking slow, easy speech because he had such a bad stutter. He, he had was a, an announcer, but he had a stutter, not to, ter- not to, ter- it don't matter. Anymore. It's all the same thing. It's all the same. Yeah. In fair. The brain. I mean, I, yeah, but I don't know. I I I just kind of felt like it was like putting me in speech was kind of like taking a someone who just got their leg am, like ampu- amputated, then telling them to go practice for the five for like it the, is. They would give them the a five prosthetic like, leg and then the have them practice using it just like that. They were using right. giving you a tool right, to fine. practice using. I I don't know. I, it's it's still here. So clearly, well, it's not going to be gone. Fixed. It's how you how you control it. So. I am the older son of two. Um, my mother gave birth to uh, a le- a le- a lesser child named De- named Declan. Um, he is inferior to me in some aspects. He is five feet taller than me, though, which is very odd because he is two he's two years younger than me, and he also looks nothing like us. Literally nothing like this. Like when I was younger, no, he takes up your dad's side. When I was younger, I used to tell him that he was adopted, um, and that was awesome because he would cry and I would laugh at the same time, uh, because you know, mom at the time was a bigger woman with black hair, and dad was a bigger dude with black hair, and I am a bigger dude with black hair, and then Declan was this thin, tall, Aryan, blue-eyed, blonde hair looking kid 
Um, but you know, given that my mom is German and Sicilian, and then dad is Irish, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I we we you know obviously, obviously I got all of the Italian and none of the Irish. Maybe in my com- maybe in my complexion, but yeah. Even that, you're pretty, you're pr- you're pretty, pretty pale. pale too. And then obviously, De- Declan got all of the Irish uh, because Sicilians. I brought this up on the episode with Emerson. Sicilians are usually darker, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sicilians are usually darker. Um, clearly, we are not. Um, a very a very odd thing. Um, um now this this we 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 might have to come back to this one but uh do you have any ch- uh any funny childhood memories of me things that I did maybe at the camp at the camp at the campground in school oh, oh my favorite one is the rocket math but then also when you and Ethan went and played in the sewer pit mm, at em. the campground you thought it was a really big funny fun to play in mud pit and and it was the septic field for the campground. And when you came back up to the camper, Kelly and I were like, okay, um, <laughs> where you been? And you said you were over in that big mud patch. And we're like, where? And then you told us where it was. And so Kelly got out the cavi wipes, which are hospital grade wipes that you're only supposed to use on surfaces. And we use them on your bodies. And scrubbed you two down completely for like two hours because you were covered in poo. But you were having fun in the dirt. That, that's where I think a lot of my talents come from. There was something radioactive in that pit that, uh, that no one else was able to harness that me and my buddy Ethan had. Um, the, the, the weirdest part about that story is I don't know how me and him didn't smell it. Well, because it was Do full little... of the blue goo and campers yeah, fair. and stuff. So I mean, the chemicals, fair. the chemicals that were in it covered. That I don't know up. because because I vividly remember when we walked into the camper, Dad like immediately went to the bathroom. Yeah, well, to... he was grossed out. Yeah, Dad, Dad does not do well with that kind of stuff. No. Um, yeah, no that that story. I mean, me and my it would be so awesome to get him on for an episode. Um, you and Ethan were. Quite a pair. Night and day, but best buddies. Night and day, do you think? Oh, 100%. I mean, Ethan was my best friend growing up. Uh, he's still a really good friend of mine. I, I just, we don't see each other that much anymore, obviously, because we are a couple states. No, but you're still good friends because you just officiated his wedding. I, I did officiate his wedding. I got, uh, I became an, an, or, an ordained minister just to officiate his wedding here. It was on the, on the coast of Georgia. Um, that was pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I have that little card in my wallet now that I can whip out and be like, y'all want to get married. Um, did I have any, well, I guess this, this, this kind of goes with the Tourette's, I guess. D- did, did I have any quirky habits or ob- obsessions as a kid? Uh, Okay, so Is our, that outside? It's our downstairs neighbors. <laughs> our downstairs neighbors. My goodness, I, I, we have I, headphones on. How loud must they have been? Um, that we could hear yeah, that so I, clearly. He, they probably just hit a bong wrong. Probably <sighs> that was entertaining. Wow. wow, wow, that was a lot. I mean, you guys already know. I, 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 I live in a <clears> very <throat> choice place. I'm happy though. I really it's like a living nice here. Place. It is. It is. You know. Um. It's a nice place, but it is just at that line where you kind of, because at the old place that I used to live at, I mean, that place, oh my gosh, nice. that place was awesome. But I had to move out for reasons I, I won't talk about, and I would much rather live by myself, obviously, but if I were to stay at that old place, man, that would just, that just, that would cost way too much, way too much. So, um. I live a very, very, a very humble life here. Although I do believe um, I, I, I am going to be moving into a one bedroom, which I'm very excited about. Given my recent uh, promotion at the house, at the house, at the hospital, I, I would like to uh, 
I would like to all to allocate those new funds into uh into a more comfortable living situation because I mean come on is 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 that not what it's for right yeah I mean I'm excited I'll have my own place I'll actually have a kitchen right now you guys can't see it my kitchen is probably smaller than your closet I can honestly say I've never seen a smaller kitchen in my life. I don't even qualify it as a kitchen. It truly it's is a, a It's closet. a cooking nook. I mean, <laughs> we we had campers with a bigger kitchen. That's correct. And we had to turn the refrigerator I door just, around just to be able to open it. You know, cuz I'm a man with a with with a with a larger radius. It don't matter. I couldn't get it open when and we were in there. The way that the fridge door used to open, you I couldn't open it unless I sucked in my gut. So we kind of had to switch that around. Well, it was stupid. Very, 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 very stupid. Um, I'm excited to see how Lars likes the one bedroom. He's going to have a bit more yeah. room to room to play. Um, uh, did I do any, anything when I was younger <coughs> that really embarrassed you? And I can think of one thing, but I, I, I want to see... And maybe not embarrass you, but just kind of like you just kind of had to pull me back so people didn't hate you. Oh, there was one. We were at church. I, I think I'm thinking of the same where one. you were like you were. Ugh. I said, "Dad, burn it" or something like. I don't remember what it was. I said, "I said something very normal." Or no, it wasn't even. It wasn't even that. You said that about a good a good tea and pot. No, I said like "Dad, burn it" or something. Okay. And after I said it, you said, "Mom, you can't say the D word in church." Oh, that's awesome. And I'm like, what? And he's oh, like, you can't say the D word in church. And I'm like, I was a what knight, are you talking about? And, and he said that of the in Lord. front of everyone. Yes. And like I said, the word damn or something. And Goodness, mom, wash your know, mouth. Because I don't. Wash. Oh, my. I am and, so sorry, But you guys. made it sound like that's what I said in church. That that's so good. I'm like, all I said was dad burn it. But you were, I, that to you, that was cussing. Yeah. Because we didn't cuss in our house. I don't like cussing. It's bad. And... And so you just knew that was a bad word and or frustration. I, was, I shouldn't be saying the D mm -hmm. word in church. I was trying to keep you in line. But everybody thought that I had said something bad. Um, what well, what, I, what I was thinking, I, I don't even, obviously, let's not bring up names, but I don't even know why I did this. But I think it was at church, too. It was like in a church parking lot at, the, at Grandma and Grandpa's church. And I don't know. There was this woman that oh, I hey, was. Lady? No, that well, one? yeah, yes, but uh, that, but 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 that's not what I said. There was this one lady woman. that that I don't know. I think we were like family friends with. We were enough friends for for me to think this was going to be okay, okay, just because I was just young enough that I was learning. Like, Actually, you were being respectful, but she didn't take it. Like that way. I was. Well, I'm not sure about being respectful, no, you but were. I was at that line where it was like I was starting to learn nuances of saying things, but at the same time, I didn't fully understand. So there was this one lady and I just I was young and I just said like, hey, woman or no, something. Or yes, so that so is what you did. Something but... like something like that. And it was just like <clears throat> I was real, 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 real young. And mom, I just oh, man, that I. I embarrassed you we so much. We were doing much. egg decorating in the park at, at the Jefferson Park Park. Yeah. The library park. And it was a church function. Oh, and man. the older ladies were there helping the young, the moms with the little kids decorate eggs. And you That's wanted it. a certain color. Hey, woman. Color or something you should, said. And you go, hey, woman, can I have that red? And she took it as like, oh, yeah. oh, hey, like, lady, give me that stuff right yeah. now. I mean, but you were saying it as, that, as actually a respectful thing of acknowledging that she was an older woman and saying, you know, hey, woman, because you didn't know her name. I, I, I don't think I knew the word ma'am yet. Yeah, basically, that's what you were trying to do was say yeah. ma'am, but without saying you said woman, yeah. acknowledging her to, you know, instead of just grabbing it yourself, yeah. it was almost like asking, but she didn't take it that way and started lecturing me. And I said, now listen, and I kind of laid down the law and said, my kids are not disrespectful. And he was not saying that. Yeah. I, I, I kind of really never looked at her the same again kind after of that because you know, ourselves into I, well, a hole there when have i ever been a nice mom i don't if you do something wrong you know it 
And so when you don't do something wrong and someone accuses you, I'm going to be the first I'm one to you. come to bat for you. I'm with you. Because I am not, a, I was not a get away with everything nice mom. You still aren't. No. No. It doesn't teach you anything. Yeah, and I've, I've certainly learned. A, yes, you have. Learned a lot. That's what your dad's for, to be the cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to love hearing you say that. Um. What are some of the most, okay, so you raising me, what were some of the more challenging aspects? What are some of the things I, that you just really couldn't nail into me as, as, as soon as you had wanted to when I was younger? Hmm. Well, how deep do you want me to go? Depends. I can cut it out. <laughs> um, oh, dear. Potty training. Okay, go for it. You, you never wanted to wipe yourself. Yeah. And so I would have to come in and do it to the point of, I remember being at the campground and the neighbors across the way came over laughing and I'm like, what is going on? They're like, well, we just had to help your son. And I'm like, okay, he was in the bathroom just screaming for help for someone to help him wipe his butt. And they had to go in and wipe your butt for you because you wouldn't do it. And then she said, yeah, you really need to start teaching that. And then like a couple weeks later, you were at our house and Kelly was, I must have had deck. I had to have had Declan then because he had Declan in the campground, but I was busy or something and you wanted, wouldn't get off. And Kelly, Kelly said, no, he's going to learn to wipe his own butt. And I'm like, no, come on, we got to help him. And she's like, no. So she basically looked at you and said, I'm not doing it. You're going to have to do it yourself. And you're like, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. And she's like, well, then figure it out. So she said, then go in the shower and wash yourself. I'm not doing it. And she made you do it. And then you did it ever since. Kelly Falk actually trained you to do that because I was too nice. Wow. Yeah. Never thought that would come up ever again. <laughs> it's one of our favorite memories. Thanks. Thanks Kelly actually that. brings that one up a lot too. Just at, at, at dinner. What? Just, she just brings it up. Like, what do we laugh about it? At, no. I mean, at, when they're sitting out in their garage and they're drinking at, a beer or something and she'll bring up at, that story of. At Panera at Panera Bread, like oh, don't you re- don't you re- don't you remember when your son you could have wiped his own butt? Fox and us going to Panera or anything? No. no, it's usually sitting around in a fun atmosphere. Also, I'm I'm gonna have to bleep those names now. I no no names. Well, come on, mom. That's right, guys. Look, look. This might come as a shocker, but mom is not exactly the on air professional that you well, might think I she is. Well, because I know they wouldn't care. It's the professional thing to do. I know. Um, <laughs> Again, when you're talking about us and them, I wouldn't consider professional being in the realm either. Do you not recall our growing up? Are you growing up? Um, clearly, uh, the 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 um, the catalyst of my of me wiping my own butt comes up a lot. So that's that's real. Well, that's real you know, nice. We'd be at Woody's eating we're good. breakfast we're, we're, for we're, hours we're, we're, and. We're, 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 and I, you would do something that I felt was inappropriate for public, and I would give you the eye, or just do the That's one, two, three thing, and just hold my finger up. I didn't have to say anything, and you would stop. Whereas she would be like, "Ethan, get your butt over here!" But cuss and really across the restaurant, and he would come over, and no one really cared because it was just Kelly. Yes, I'm saying her name. So you have to do a lot of bleeping, but Thanks, that was just the way she parented. Yeah, we parented different. You're both good kids. You're both very successful kids, just different parenting. Well, hey, I mean, as happy as I am that we had just covered that, um, you know, so so you had two kids. You had me and Declan. What were some of the key di- the key differences of you raising me, you raising Declan? I mean, ha- well, how did I turn out so perfect, and how did he turn out so unfortunate? Well, I raised you both the same. She did. I was a stay-at-home mom. She did not say no to that. I was a stay-at-home mom. You both have different gifts. I have and more. We encouraged you, but we made you try things. Like, for example, more. you were in every single sport growing up because you had to at least try it, and you would have to finish the season. Like, for example, baseball, <laughs> or well, oh, back then it was t-ball. That's but a good one. We made you do it. We made you do swimming. We made you do all sports. And we also made you do music. You you sang at a young age. You played the piano at a young age. We, and the same with your brother. He did all the sports and we also had him do piano. And we yeah. had him do musicals and try things like that. And then whatever you were, you loved 
out of them. That's what we would encourage. But we made you try well, things. Yeah. And now that I think about it, you did make me and Declan do everything. Mm -hmm. Like you, you did everything together. You did the you same. You had me and Declan do everything. Hold on. The point was to expose you to everything to figure out and what guess, your gifts yeah. were and your loves were. Declan just stuck with what he stuck with and I stuck what I stuck well, with. Well, because you had different gifts. See, you have the gift of song and the gift of music and the arts. The and gift he has of, the more gift of like the athletic I stuff. I have the gift of charisma and conversation and You're definitely you know, different when it comes Declan to speaking. Declan has the gift speaking of, and, you know. But you both have solid awkwardness. hearts. Yeah, yeah, no, we, we, You're both, we good both kids. have good hearts. Um, Declan's definitely going to come on for an ep for an uh, for an episode in the future. Declan is back in Illinois though, so it would it would be like the first online episode. The only reason I haven't had him on yet, and he was actually just texting me about this. I said that hey, I'm going to have mom on. What are some good questions? And he was like, I thought you were going to have me on Faith. Um, and I was like, Well, mom is here in person. You know, I don't, I would rather do in-person episodes than an online one just because of the quality. Uh, but he, he will be on soon. Um, yeah, yeah, no, you, um, I did every sport. Oh man. Basketball. What a mistake. You did everything you did. You, but you, you enjoyed it when you did it. It just wasn't, you didn't love it, but we made you try it. You were, you were in rec basketball. I mean, look, look, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking back on it. I guess I'm happy you made me do all of it, but uh, I think every single sport that I did was just, it was just kind of turned into another place for me to get bullied at. So probably, but not you had probably to, that's that, that, you had that to is try what it, happened, but we had to expose you to it. That's why I have such thick skin now is because practically every single day after school, I just have a good hour and a half of just getting <laughs> bullied basketball, uh, Soccer, soccer was fine. You had yeah. Soccer. I See, actually I had, you liked did a lot of sports. You one, did you know, like soccer. Yeah, you, you soccer a lot. You hit one out of six. Yeah, yeah. No, soccer was fun. I actually really in, in, enjoyed soccer. I think partially was because. Um, so see, we raised you both identical. A lot of my friends that I had at the time were on the were on the team. Well, you did it for the social. Oh, track. I mean, you did it for the social aspect. Yeah, track. Declan did it for the uh, the sports aspect. Sure. Yeah. I mean, but it, was, it, okay. it was it was it was fun. Um, but you know, swimming. You hated I swimming. I would have rather <laughs> been there for Chernobyl. <clears throat> yes, than you hated swimming. Had done swimming. But it was a good, healthy sport. I'm not okay. It. And it's an I, individual I, I sport where you were just basically competing against yourself oh, to better I mean, yourself. Sw swimming was literally just mom driving me to uh, how to bully 101, which wasn't her fault. It w was not mom's fault. But there was not a single swim practice that didn't end up in me probably crying. Probably. Um, but, yeah. you know, it made you grow as an individual. And Thanks for that. Each of those experiences, um, you just make you grow. Mm, See? Look at Good mm, mom. Amazing. Uh, yeah, no. that I mean, all of that stuff I feel like is ne is necessary, you know, because then you kind of get into the, into, the de into the debate of, like, if you shield your kids from everything, mm -hmm. they get soft, they get apolo 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 apologetic. If you don't shield your kids for everything, at that point, you kind of think to yourself, am I, <coughs> am, am, am I purposely throwing them to the sharks? But then at the same time, it's like, well, that's just life. They and have I had to... those conversations with myself, too. Oh, yeah. 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 Like, uh, <coughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, no, swimming wasn't great. Um, baseball. Baseball. <laughs> baseball how man how, one, is it, how can you not say one his season, name how can you not one say his season, name that once was, once was it one season that i played oh no you played t-ball and then up through maybe you played maybe three or four years so let's just call him g but that last year let's just call him g yeah he was the ultimate bullier <laughs> but but it wasn't just you oh yeah because he bullied everyone i mean i i was the target but you know, there some some of the buckshot did hit other people. We um we we had we had this one kid. Let's just call him G. Uh, G was a prolific bully up until still is I think. Yeah, I mean now pretty he's pretty much adult through still. high school. 
But uh, baseball was the. <laughs> yeah. I you know um, I wish at that age I knew that the things that I did really wouldn't matter in the future. No, but it was a good story, and in, in because I would have done a the whole other lot. teammate. The other teammate loved you for doing it because he was bullying him too. Because I would have done a whole lot more if well, I yeah, knew that you that, and you that, been, that well, stuff. I tried to get you to do those things. What like beat beat people up? Oh yes, I said yeah. I, I I don't I know. try against it. That one kid that bullied you all the time in school. I said just clock him and he'll stop. I can't do that. I can't. I'm like, well, then that's that's your option. Because he's not going to stop, so you either clock him or you just deal with it. And I just, I wish I would have known back then that, dude, it would not have mattered. It it matters now. I go to I go to jail. Well, your brother did it in junior high because he finally got tired of being bullied really? on the basketball court. And right in the middle of a game, he just turned around and clocked a kid. What? Yeah. Seventh grade. A kid was constantly I, checking him on the court, but, think, but checking him in the wrong I re- times. I probably... And- remember that but you were I in don't. high school so you wouldn't have come to the games because you were at you, or you were there sounds like something i probably would have been told at home oh we talk about it all the time ask you that'd be a good thing to ask declan about i never okay yeah we're learning something today but yeah <coughs> in baseball let's just call him g i um i i was he was yelling at everyone i did not hit a single ball ever because my hand eye cord co coordination is about as fluent as lars is to english so, uh, you know, in T-ball, there really isn't no three strikes and you're out. It's just like you just keep yeah, going. Yeah, this wasn't. You were an actual. An athlete, truly. Baseball at um, that point. You were playing actual and I just, T-ball. I, I, I just kept missing and missing and missing and missing. And he kept yelling, like, come on, fatty, hit it. No, oh my that's gosh, not what hit he did. It. No, what? what? You no, were, yeah. And it was when you were on, you were getting on base or something. And, what did and, he say? And. And the pitcher, who was also your really good friend at the time, okay. kept like messing up or something. And you had, he had, yes, he had, mm, he had bullied you for a long time, you, Okay, but he, but you had finally had enough and he'd been bullying you the whole game and making fun of you and saying things. And then he started in on the pitcher who was also your friend. And that's when you just finally had enough and turned around and said, Maybe if you focused on yourself, you could actually make a run sometime or something like that. And something like totally like just went off and it was dead silent. You're and right. the pitcher was just yeah. like, yes, finally, You're someone right. called him out. And you so never did that. But that was the one time you finally gained ground on him. You publicly embarrassed in front of oh, both yeah. teams. We were in Hudson playing. I remember the environment and you just stopped the game yeah. and just yelled at him. All right, here we go again, guys. Sorry, we went for a little pee-pee break. Um, yeah, you know, baseball, everything. Let's see. Yeah, soccer was good. Baseball, that was baseball. Basketball. How long did basketball last? Oh, junior or grade school. Yeah. I don't think you did it into junior high. You just I, did grade I, school. I didn't get that bullied in basketball. Maybe fourth or fifth grade. I got bullied less in basketball than swimming, but back. Basketball was still bad because it was kind of a lot of the more, what's the word, douchey kids. I don't know. Just kids that just, I don't know, just I felt like it was more, like basketball is the one sport where more of the mean kids were in. No, because you were always on the teams with the kids that maybe didn't have the love for basketball. What are you trying to say? They put you on the teams with. The kids of other parents that forced their kids to do sports they didn't want to do. You're darn right. Um, how unprofessional. Is it Noni? Yeah. Why don't you just let her Noni talk? Okay, hold on. Noni, you are on air of the Something Cafe podcast. What do you have to say to the people? I have to say to the people, it's chilly here. Are Is you it golfing? Here? It's very warm here. Uh, good. Good, good. Are you golfing? No, I'm just getting ready to go in about half hour. Carrie and Debbie are picking me up. Now, Grandma Noni, just for the people who don't know who you are, because again, let me remind you, you are on air. Uh, You (laughs) are my grandmother, correct? Yes. And what is the color of your skin? What? (laughs) You goofball. 
That's all the time we have today. Thank you for <laughs> calling in to the Something Cafe podcast. Are uh, you going golfing with Declan today? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, call me later. Because we're on air. Okay. Bye. All right. Love you. Bye. bye. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the kind of content you get here at the Something Cafe podcast. Um, you know, let's just do a little break in the fourth wall here. This is episode 11, Mom. How cool is that? Episode 11. That is 11 weeks of doing this podcast. 11 weeks. That is about what? Four, eight, nine, ten, Remember, 11. you cheated on rocket math. So uh, it's 11 been times. Two months and three weeks. This podcast <laughs> is. Just, Again, just, just remember, just you cheated on rocket math. Stick with it. <laughs> Stick with it. How many weeks is two months and three weeks? How many weeks is that? 11 weeks. Okay. Just make sure. Say, Mom. <laughs> okay. Okay. So in our family, I haven't always been the one that's been known to be the best at math. No. Mm-hmm. My senior year of high school, I was in algebra one. Mm-hmm. But I, our Editor Evan Green, <coughs> Evan Greenfield. Uh, oh, you can use he, his name. Yeah, because he's my okay. He's my editor. Um, he was in that class. Was he? That surprises yeah, so me because Evan, I thought, was really smart. At he things. is. He yeah. is. He is very smart. Said, he he, he was math. like a freshman. Oh yeah, he was. No, he was a year younger. Than me. No, two years freshman. Wasn't too. He wasn't something. No. Look, my editor is. He probably would have oh, been here comes Lars up. Where from behind the couch? He climbed up. You'll probably see him again. Um, um, that's 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 good. How did I end up with Lars, Mom? Uh, I told you you needed a cat. Wow. You know, Mom. I know you're a, a journalist virtuoso. Um, I'm, I'm kind of looking for a story here. Well, I told you you needed a cat and you said no, 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 and forever. And then finally you said, okay, yeah, I could maybe use a cat. Okay. And And, so we run, we run a rescue out of our home Finally, called Cats of Woodford County. And we rescue stray cats off the streets of Woodford and McLean counties. And we get them vetted at the vet and spay and neutered and... Then we get them adopted out, and we're actually one of the um, largest adopters of cats out of PetSmart. We have an exclusive deal with PetSmart now, wow. and our cats get adopted out of PetSmart. And um, and Lars came along. We've had lots of spe- I, the first cat we had that I wanted you to take. You weren't ready for a cat at that time. Was Frumpy? And, yeah, it was Frumpy. He was he was a little mentally slow. He had and he Down was blind syndrome. in one eye, but he was like this funnest cat but it he would like randomly the, run into doors or the wall or whatever that was the best cat i mean but he got adopted by a perfect family yeah frumpy was awesome you know i'm gonna go ahead and throw up a couple photos of uh frumpy up on this up on the screen right now but uh frumpy oh, such a cute cat he it was. was this cat with down syndrome and blind in one eye he couldn't lift Pure his head white long-haired blue he, eye he would constantly run into walls because well, he, he was looking down he couldn't lift his head up more than three inches no he could lift his head up he just couldn't oh. see so he would look down at the ground and then he was so cute he was we know lars lars is pretty perfect and then we got lars and there was just some out of we've had probably 200 cats mm-hmm. in our house and there was lars something was special, special about lars he was just a you know and then when i when i move into my one bedroom we are looking to maybe get me a second yep. cat just because I'm gone so long of the day if it's not work, which I mean, look, it takes me. He needs a buddy. Look, it it take it t- take takes me thirty to forty five minutes to get to work. It takes that long to get fr- to get back home. I'm 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 gone for at least nine hours of the day, and then on top <clears> of that, <throat> I have uh, a set schedule for myself just to keep my just to keep my my spending in check. I have set schedules for myself. To go to the cafe or do this or do that. Um, Lars is alone a lot, so when I get when I get home, he's he's just very active and kind of aggressive, just because he's he's been home alone. So I want I do want to get an- another cat to accompany him, and that's going to help out in the you in will. the one bedroom place. Um, 
So we're looking for that special kitten because yeah. it's kitten season yeah. right now. Yeah. So we're going to be getting a lot of kittens in. And yeah. You know, speaking of kittens, we had two amazing childhood we did. cats, didn't we? We did. We had Pachi, uh, uh, short for Pachirisu. And we had Tiki. And Tiki is short for what, Mom? Tiki Tiki Timbo, Nosa Rimbo, Marbar Pucci. Nope. Mar- Tiki Tiki Timbo, Nosa Rimbo. Chari Bari. Chari Bari Rucci. Yep. Pip Perry Pimbo. Pimbo. Tiki Tiki Timbo. No so Rimbo. Cherry Berry Ricci. Pip Perry Pimbo. Perry Pimbo. Yeah. And uh was your all time favorite book. Tell them what on earth that means, Mom. It's it's actually an old uh Chinese folklore. Chinese folklore about This is they I re- named this is good. they named their first son Tiki Tiki Timbo, Narsa Rimbo, Cherry Bar Ricci, Pip Perry Pimbo. And because that's what you did with your eldest son, something like that. And, and it was a true Chinese um, folklore. folklore. And then they had another son and we'll just say named Jack. Declan. Yeah. They had another son named Jack. And so Pit Perry, Pimbo and Jack are somewhere and he gets like stuck in a well. Pit Perry, Pimbo falls into a falls well. Falls into a well. And then Jack is comes down to save him but he can't he's so out of breath he can't say his whole name so it takes them forever and i think he, he ends up well okay in the book so, it wait, doesn't hold on, end hold on, hold on. the true hold on, hold on. so so then in the childhood in the kids one he finds the old man of the mountain yeah. and climbs up his magical ladder and says old man of the mountain i need you to help save my brother but after he had her. gone to several people he couldn't yeah. get out their name yeah. so they kind of were like oh so we then, can't help you and have time because he couldn't mm-hmm. say their name so the so old long. man of mountain comes down he puts the ladder down he saves them but really but but then you had the a girl so that's what the story was that we always knew it, it was the childhood <laughs> but rendition then, then later on in the year a student joined your class who came from china yeah and she was, she was a neat, neat little girl. Cause this would have been kindergarten. This would have been kindergarten. Wow. Yeah. Cause you wouldn't have been in first grade yet. Totally. It would have been that. kindergarten. And so she came into class and she actually had just come here from China. She'd lived, grown up in China her whole life. I don't know why she a- ended up here. Well, her like, family came here and started the restaurant in town. But of all places, uh, yeah. why? <laughs> I think they knew somebody like came not as a missionary, but like they knew a fa- met a family from here and they brought them here to the states for a better life or I something. Wanna, I really don't know. I want to remind you guys where we're where we are from. I mean, yeah. it is like the most podunk population of almost two thousand people, little country town, and then. This oriental family, amazing family who started this awesome business. Oh man, and we loved that place. It, it was, was like awesome. the best restaurant. But, but anyway, it's like how 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 did you end up here of all places? Can we say her name? No, no. Let, well, let, I can't. Anyway, so he brought her in, and well, Betsy. Yeah, yeah, we'll just call her Betsy. Yeah. And so we brought her in, and so anyway, she's in his class. So yeah. they, she joins the class midway through the year, and so Celestino's thing was he always had me come and read that story. I don't all know of his why, classes. Yeah. And because you learned about it in preschool with Mrs. McCabe. Yeah. She's the one that originally. Yeah. Anyway, so we come in and I read the story and she goes, but that's not how the story ends. And we're all and like, I'm like, well, yeah, it does. I've been reading this story for three years. She's like, no, no, no. Because the moral of the story is if you have that long of a name, you die. And um, we're all like, what? We're like kind of more like the teacher and I are kind of mortified. Like, and okay. Betsy's like, and she's just very matter like, of fact about it. She's like, no. It's, and she's like six years old. Yeah. But she was very, I will say, um, in, she was in very the well culture spoken. she was raised in, very well she spoken. was way beyond academically people in the States. Oh yeah. Way Absolutely. beyond. She was probably reading and writing and arithmetic and math. She was probably at, like a second and third grade level when these guys were in kindergarten. Yeah. Very intelligent, very well spoken oh, yeah. young girl. And she was very fun. A really and hard worker. I mean, she was just the sweetest little thing. But anyway, she was just like, absolutely not. That, that, that he dies. And we're like, okay, well, let's change the subject now. <laughs> so the moral of the actual story was if you name your kid a long name in China, he'll die. Because what had happened in the correct version was. They could never save him from the well because it took so long to say his, say his name, name that he just ended up 
down there and just starve to death. Yeah, I don't remember actually and what she said, but yes. Yeah, I always that. just thought that was so funny because the whole story was about not naming your son a name that's long and then you had me. Well, yeah. And named me. And they, but they didn't shield kids. Celestino. In, in her, where she grew up, they didn't shield kids from things. They just educated them. And, 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 and that's what's funny is, you know, for the name that you gave me, it's like the worst name for a kid with a stutter because- <laughs> I mean, you're, 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 you're basically just taping two banana peels well, to my plus, feet. Well, plus, isn't the s- sound um, a hard, an easy one to stutter with? Celestino. I was thinking that yeah. the so was like one of those vowels. That... Cons- it's just consonants are but hard. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Cons- so, yeah. Cons- consonants are hard. And, uh, yeah. I wonder yeah. whatever happened to her, because I think they moved back. They moved, yeah. I think they moved back to China, though. And here's something I never asked you. Where on earth did you even find that book? Lord, Mrs. Your pre- preschool. So they were, you guys were just sitting there eating. No, it was her. It was one of her favorite stories like, yeah, to tell people. One of my, one of my no, favorite it was things. it was your teacher's one of her favorite books to tell because it had a lot of like vowel like that you could. It was tick, a um tick, re- repetition is tick, very tick, important tumble, yeah. to when you're young. Yeah. You, that's why you do racket math. That's why you do those things because when you repeat things over and over again, it's how you learn things. I'm and listening. so this was about repetition of vowel sounds and, and doing things. It was a good book for that purpose. Okay. And it was one of her favorite books to use for repetition because throughout the book, like every other chapter, they would say, or even every other sentence would be like, well, tiki tiki timbo, nursa rimbo, charibaruchi, yeah. pit peri pimbo. And so the whole class, when you were reading the book, like, so then Jack and Pit Perry Pembo and Osar Rimbo, Charibai Ricci, Pit Perry Pembo went up the hill. And as they were walking up the hill, they came across a beautiful tree. And Pit Perry Pembo and Osar Rimbo, and she would repeat. <clears throat> so that's what we named our cat. So we named it? No. Yes. We named Tiki after that. Yeah, we yeah, did. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. What am I saying? I don't yeah. know what I'm saying. Yeah, so we had one. Yeah. Uh, so our, the cat's our, name was Tiki. Our, our, our because that also went cat. into Declan, too. Huh? Like Declan's class for yeah. that story too, because you he, you had the yeah. same teachers. Yeah, so that was our first uh, childhood cat, Tiki, and you guys found Tiki, right? You guys just rescued her from the um, barn or something. Yeah, Dad no, found her. Dad was out there grilling, and this cat ki- kitten, there's a little kitten, kept coming up to him, and Declan found it. I was gone, and Dad said he could never have cats in the house because he yeah. was allergic. And I was somewhere at church doing something, whatever. And I come home and there's a cat in the house. I'm like, what on earth? And dad said, well, Declan found it and he really liked it. I'm like, no, but you're allergic. Can't have cats. And he's like, well, but Declan really wants it. I'm like, okay. And so that was Declan's cat. And so we had a cat in the house. Yeah, we did. So we had Tiki first and Tiki, Tiki got fat. Tiki was a big girl. Um, very, very fluffy. Uh, but then that was kind of like dad and Declan's cat kind of. It was. Uh, but then, and of course you guys are never going to get a normal story from us. So the, our second childhood cat, my baby girl, Pachurisu, we got her because, um. It was another girl in your class. Yeah, go for it. She, uh, there, the cat had, there was like six the cat cats. Had kittens. Oh, that's how Tiki, but that's how Tiki got out. To, no, first though, with Tiki, she got out to our house because her and her siblings came out, were dropped off at our house because the mom had bro- gotten into one of our friends's house while they were gone okay. and gave birth inside their couch. There you go. And they came home for the weekend Water with sports. a kitten. With a mom and kittens inside their couch. And so we brought the kittens out to the farm. That's how we got Tiki. Or that's how Tiki came out. But Pachi, it was another person from your class. The the cat had kittens in their house too, but I think that was planned. Sure. And um There were siblings. There the kids. Yeah, there was two. There I th- one was in Declan's class and one was in yours. No, no, I'm I'm saying so. Oh, there so, was multiple cats. So, pa- so Pachi so they brought was the, part there was of a litter. Four kittens that came out. So they brought. Okay. So anyway, they had these kittens in their house, and the one little girl did not like them, and she thought they were dirty. So she sprayed them all down with Lysol and bleach, uh, and basically 
Yeah, and so the mom's like, she's going to end up killing these cats, yeah. so she brought them out to the farm. Because that girl was crazy. She was. She, uh, was she had a few issues, she mental a, issues. She had a couple screws loose. She but, did, but so anyway, they, so that's how those, the, yeah. she brought them out to the farm so to they save brought, them, basically. So they brought the cats out. I don't know why they chose us, because we, Because we were friends with them, sure. and I just probably said, hey, if you, you know, bring sure. them out to the farm. We'll so take they them. brought the four the four cats, they, they lined them up, and they were like, all right, you know, go... Go go ahead and choose one. And no, work. they left them all out at the farm. Really? Yeah, and then you were just out there playing with it, and okay. you just like you well, picked that one. And you were like, I want Pachi, and I said, one to of your them dad, was well, uh, I don't know. One of them was more shy than the others, and I specifically remember it hiding under the lawn mower. And I was like, I was like, I was like, mommy, mommy, I want that one. Plus, it was cute. Very, very cute. It had this little little tan spot on its forehead. And very, long-haired. very, very, very cute. So, you know, I, I, you know, mom was like, all right, cool. So we brought her in and I re I remember why, but I remember exactly where I was when, uh, when I thought of what to name her, we were at a museum, maybe it was an aquarium, but it was a muse, it was a muse, a museum. And I was just, we had already been thinking about like, what the heck do we name this cat? And obviously I love Pokemon. Everyone knows that who listens to this because I bring Pokemon up every episode. But um, I was trying to think like what what po- what Pokemon resembles this cat the most? Well, there's this one Pokemon called Pachirisu, Pachur- uh, and it's this like little white and blue electric squirrel thing. And I was like, Mom, I want to name her Pachirisu. Mom said yes, and then you know we just ended up calling her Pachi. Really. Pachi and Tiki. Um, now, Pachi, Pachi and Tiki, the thing is with them, and the reason why when they, when those two cats passed away, the reason why it, it was so hard with those was because me, me, and, me and Declan do not have a single memory that goes early enough to, from, to, be, to before those cats. Yeah. Like every single... If me and my little brother were to think as hard as we could and try to think of a memory early enough before those cats, we wouldn't be able to do it. So they were basically there around us our entire lives. So Tiki had passed away during COVID, like 2020, mm-hmm. 2021. Um, that sucked because uh, I, I, I was the one who had to bury her and everything like that. Because yeah. I don't know. I was well, just, we only it, during COVID. Cause I was a bit more stoic. Only like one Two people could go, or one person could go to the vet. We actually had, was she me. had to be put down, which was, was really sad. And, it was me and dad. She was medically having seizures in in yeah. the vet. Just at that point, it was just humane. Yeah, I mean, and mean, and and I've always been the one of the family to just be able to do things yeah. without being too emotional. So we did that. And uh, then then Pachi had passed away while I was here at college, which I don't know. It's kind of like a sweet and sweet and sour sauce thing going on here, because on on one hand, I would have liked to have been there. But on the other hand, it's nice that I wasn't there because, I mean, Pachi was literally like my baby. And yeah, maybe it, it was, was better easier that, to accept. Sure. Not sure being yeah. There. But then now I have Lars. Lars is my baby boy. My first guy cat. Um, and really, really cool because you work with the, with the vet there. We got his balls chopped off for free. Um, that well, was, he was great. a rescue cause all the rescue yeah. cats get vetted and neutered and spayed. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, P- Pachi and Pachi and Tiki, were Pachi awesome. and Tiki will always have a special place. Oh yeah. Um, and then now y'all have more cats. So then we right? waited a while and then we let Declan pick out a cat Yeah, and a rescue. And so I mean, we, we got a rescue kitten, and then yeah. on Christmas Day, we were sitting around, and the only sibling of Sylvia's was no one had adopted, no one wanted her, no one wanted her. And your dad said, we can't leave the cat. I'm dad. like, oh, but you're allergic. <laughs> yeah. We can't leave the one sibling by itself. So we ended up on Christmas Day calling and saying, hey, give us both the siblings. <laughs> push over, push over Brian. I was like, you know what? <laughs> Fine. He didn't want to leave the one sibling oh, alone, so I we got it. we got both of them. Yeah, so we got Sylvia and Cinder, which yeah. I'm I'm not super attached to, just because that's about well, the time you, I, moved I moved shortly after that. Out. Yeah, because I moved out 
You would have moved out that like well, I we got them at, like Jan we got them in January. Picked them up after Christmas in January and then you moved out in like July. I mean, think about it. I moved out like I had graduated <clears throat> from high school and then that next weekend I moved out because I got accepted into my dream college before my senior year of high school even started. But I'll say it. We just wanted to get you out of Illinois. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. during COVID, Illinois It was sucked. just getting really- Illinois shut everything down Just really Florida getting cramped and, and I was getting tired of the, the same people and the same thing. It had nothing to do with it. It was all about COVID and being well, able to come well, here. And that, that, that was me. Yeah. I had my reasons. You were ready to move on. Oh, yeah. I it was, was like, time. Oh, yeah. I, I, I you know- like I moved out as early as any high school graduate can move out. Oh, so yeah. um I'm pretty proud of myself for that for that, although I didn't really become fully independent until uh I'd graduated college. Now I'm except for a, a bill or two there, uh which I would still like to take on at at at, at some point. But yeah, you know. Um Well, I think it's silly to get your own self bill. That's just a waste of money. Oh yeah, I mean I mean, it's just stupid. It's a waste of money. Yeah. Um, oh, man. What was I going to say? Um, the cats, you weren't close cats, to them. And then, little, and then we got little. And then we got little. Little, yeah. 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 Someone um, dumped her. Talk about. <laughs> okay. So I've always, everyone that I grew up with has always known, and I still am to an extent, like, I have a fear of dogs. I do. Mm-hmm. I've, 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 I've always, always have like, cause like you, you have some people who just don't like dogs. I don't, I don't like dogs. Except for Max. You never were scared of Max. Max was fun. But, 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 but that's, that's the, that's the difference is there. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that one? Oh, hello. Caller number 33. You are on air of the something cafe podcast. What do you have to say to the people? Are you actually serious? Yes, you are. You are, are on live. Caller, what do you have to say to the people? Oh, hey. Don't be inappropriate. Um, I wasn't. <laughs> um, no, I was going to say that. That's all the time we have for now. Thank you, <laughs> caller number 33. Well spoken. I couldn't have what said it better myself. What were you going to say, Declan? I couldn't tell you how many times I asked Grandma what time I, we were going to be at the golf course. And I left Champagne probably 20 minutes ago. Yeah. And she goes... She calls me saying, hey, we're headed to the golf course. Okay. Oh, well, they'll wait for you. Ladies, yeah. la- where are you going golfing I'm going at? Terry. Oh, you're, oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. I know. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the type of exciting conversation only you can get here at the Something Cafe podcast. Declan, do you have any uh, last words for the audience? Uh, I'll be on in a couple weeks. That's awesome. All right. Well, thank you for calling in, caller. We well, will talk on. to you later. Do you need later. anything, Declan? Love you. Love you. Love you. Today's episode might not be <laughs> as professional as other episodes and well put together, but... It's because you have your mom. You know what? It is the family episode. We can lay back a little bit. So what if the audio sounds like crap this week? Yes. You know what? Sure, mom doesn't know. It's part know. of the fun. And sure, that's how, that's mom. That's what kind of mom I am. I stop whatever I'm doing for any of my children. We, well, we still answered the call. I know I stopped. Okay. Well, yeah, as I said, I stopped Look, what I'm doing to, for my children. Microphones were, in, were, in, were invented after mom was born, so we know she isn't that keen to them. But hey, you, you, you know what? We are, we are, we are still here. Um, and I had remembered what I was going to say, and then Declan called, and I forgot. Um, but, uh, some of the differences between me and Declan when we were growing up, Declan was a a crier, right? I was quiet. Yes. What, what, what were some of the things? Cause I, I mean, come on, mom, I can't be that perfect. Well, Declan was babied. What was I? We were both babied. I was the trial. Yeah. What was it? Okay. Well, that's something that we could get into. I mean, you know, having a kid for the first time, having me. How old were you and dad? I don't know. Oh, that's exciting. 
Um, 35, maybe? <laughs> I was maybe 30. How old are you? I don't know. 20, <laughs> 21. Yeah, so I was probably like 34, 35. What Dad was... Like 28. You know, because because my 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 audience of four of four people are uh more around my age i've 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 got one guy at work that 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 does listen what's up michael 60 years old going strong um what was it like what 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 were some of the um, the emotions when you first brought me home like what when mm. when when well, you first when we, brought me when home? we opened up the door and took you out of the car for the first time to come in the house there was a dead animal on the road. So there was turkey vultures everywhere. And I thought for sure they were going to swoop down and get you. So I like ran with you in the house. That's one not thing I really, remember from the not day. Not really the uh, emotional answer. I was that is wanting. the one thing I remember is having to run with you in the house. Cause I thought the turkey vultures were going to okay. come down. And then Nico came up and I batted him down. And then that was our dog at the time. And then he didn't um, come near me for like a year. Because Bel- I know, put you before the dog. Believe okay. Belie- so both of them were animal involved. Believe it or not, Mom, I was, I was looking <laughs> for a bit of an, a, a more sincere answer. But, but hey, you never. This is the this is Again, the something Dad cafe was podcast. The cheerleader and the loving one, and I was the other disciplinarian. Other than the vultures trying to kill me, what was it like when you first brought me home? When when you and Dad sat down, I and- constantly would check and see if you were breathing. Well, okay. That's what you a new mom does because she's paranoid. Like you're yeah. constantly like, oh, okay. Like he'd be sleeping there so quietly, but then you couldn't really tell. So you'd kind of move him and make him wake up. And then you were like, oh, crap. I was a pretty good baby though. You huh? were a very good baby. You slept through the night, the first week home. You I were an incredible. Do. You were the worst baby to have as your first baby. Yeah. Because you were the perfect baby. You, they don't you, make them like this any anymore, guys. You you slept through the night. You ate when you were supposed to. You just did everything You're right. perfect. Um, I still do. Now, speaking of that, that, that does kind of rem, rem, remind me of something. Um, this is something that obviously not a lot of people know. Why would they? But when I sleep, my threat still goes. Mm-hmm. Tell me about that. You know, when I was younger... Even, you know, because... Well, part of it, you you carry on conversations in your sleep. Oh, yeah. I mean, complete, full-blown conversations. And I know that would freak me out at first because you'd be like six or seven and you'd be in there sleep, sound asleep, but having a conversation like someone was... I'm like, oh my gosh, who's in the house? Well, yeah, you would do that too, but then you would actually talk. Like, I was... Climbing up the hill, and then I fell, and then I did this, and then I met with Joe, and then Sam came over, and then actually, and I'd go in there, and you were dead asleep. Yeah, I um, I I I I use this app. It's 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 called Pokemon Sleep. It's like a Pokemon app for tracking your sleep, and it re- it does it records things that you say, and I I still use it to this day, and and. Every every day, I, I I I get to go through all the conversations I had with myself, and yeah, it's all, it's like, it, it'll 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 say like, rec- like recorded at three a.m. It's like, mm-hmm. you still do, you still talk. I sometimes sing in my sleep too. Yeah, yeah. I remember what I was talking about dogs. Dogs. I brought up dogs and the oh, fear of yeah, dogs. Oh, yeah, dogs. The short little dog era that you and dad had, how did that go and why did you stop? Well, the first one we had was Nico. And Nico was my baby Nico before I had good. babies. And he was a good dog, little miniature beagle. He was a sweetheart. And dad had just come home from surgery and couldn't. From his hernia? He, right? Yeah, I, was, I think so. And had been in the hospital for like three or four days. And we just got home and Nico got out on me and ran on the road and got killed like within seconds of being home. But I couldn't, there you go. he, dad couldn't do anything. It was really sad. That was really sad because he was, like I said, he was my baby before I had babies. He went everywhere with me. Yeah. And then after <laughs> when we gave it a little while, but did that, we have Nico when, yeah, we had Nico when you were little because he would have seizures and I know we, it was kind of a blessing yeah. in disguise. Because now, now have you guys ever read the book in the Bible revelations? Yeah, why? Well, what does that have to do with the dogs dying? Geppetto had a verse in there. 
Because well, Geppetto was well, actually yeah, but Satan. They don't know who Geppetto. Geppetto so, was our second dog. We got Geppetto because I, I Ooh. grew up not having yippy dogs. I grew up having real dogs. That, growing up. that that dog was made. We in had hell. like we had like an Irish Setter growing up. We had a Australian Shepherd. We had a Blue Heeler. We had big dogs. And then your dad only had stupid yippy dogs growing up, and so. Nico was our compromise because he was a big dog in a little dog body. But then we got Geppetto because it was a peekapoo, which is what your dad had growing up. And it was dumbest. I hated man. that dog. I hate to say that about it any was animal. Satan. But it, it was, was just, actually Satan. And it I would, would come home and all of my dinosaur toys had their heads off. Yes, it would eat toys. It was just not. It was. I just hated that. That dog was the worst. And how? Was, how? Didn't we give it back? We finally, honest? yeah, we put it up. We uh, gave it. We gave gave it back to a rescue, and they got it freedom, adopted somewhere. Freedom, like you've never felt. I, I've it. never had that feeling of an animal in my life until you had. That I had one. no problems giving that dog up, and I've never been that way about any animal. But there was just something about that dog from the day we got it. It was a very short lived. We, we only had Geppetto for evil maybe six that's, months. That's actually what made me religious was just learning how to. Fend off that He was truly dog. just a yippy little bitey Evil. dog. I just, yeah. Um, now, you know. And then we got cats. Believe it or not, mom did not have the most normal childhood. I mean, you know. I did. No, you didn't. Um, so, other than Mumbly Peg, you know, and this is one of my favorite things to talk about because of how stupid it sounds. and Just how she just makes it sound so normal. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this as much as I do. Mom, mom grew up playing at this old man named Poss's cabin. It was this cabin in the woods that she would pull Taffy with this old dude named Poss. No, it was a whole and bunch would, of us. And it go, was very normal. You go dig for old mud bugs and crawfish with Poss and pelt pulling Taffy. No. I think... Tell them about Poss's, Poss's cabin. We all went out to Poss's cabin and hung out on the weekends. And it That's was the most mom and dad's friends and then their kids, which were my age. And we all grew up as friends together. And we would have taffy poles out there and we'd go hogging. You and eat tree and, bark. And, and No, and we would eat fish. We'd go hogging in the river. and then What is hogging? Um, getting in the river and... And feeling around for big old fish and grabbing them with your hands and pulling them up and put them in a bag. They truly don't make them like they used to, guys. And no, we were just different in the eighties. We weren't scared to get dirty. Well, and have I fun. tried to get dirty when I was younger. And you I, did. I tried I my best ended to up, raise you. I up. ended up playing in poop. You did. I tried to raise you up like a good, and that's why you're such a good kid today. Clearly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you would go fishing, and and then you'd come home, and we'd bring the bags of fish home from the creek, and then the what? Cut the creek. The, the creek. Mackinac. The the creek. Mackinac Creek, but we called it a creek. Yeah. And Grandpa Ivan always made sure I went, even though I it was mainly only guys that went. I was the only girl that ever went, and so I'd usually have to be the one to carry the bag up. Grandpa the Grandpa Ivan was, you know still is he's he's not dead but, um he he was like a big he like i love driving he's awesome and i especially loved him when i was younger because you know that 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 good that good old grandson grandpa you know kind of real you know relationship and uh he was the one who taught me fishing and everything like that, and he was also the man that <laughs> int- that, that that introduced me to the su- to the sweet sweet kiss of death. Um, we had gone. He feels bad about that to this day. To though. this day, and I, I I I I I bring it up every time because it's hilarious. Well, because but, but you need well, to preface it by saying I I was raised. That's just what we did. We would. I was just raised to so go do that. So what stuff. had happened was. And grandpa and I, we went out fishing, you know, and obviously it was just, it was just grandpa fishing. It wasn't like I could do anything. No, you would fish. I yeah. mean, he would cast it out for you and then yeah. you'd reel it in. But, uh, we were, we were fishing and we caught this like big old catfish and I was so excited. I was like, oh my gosh, I got my own catfish. Oh, my own catfish. I can't wait to name it and keep it. Well, we had a big aquarium. We did. Time. Yeah. And, uh, so grandpa puts it in this like cool cage thing it was like a, a, a like a ball a cage new, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. We take it home and, and grandpa's out outside at the shed doing something and I'm inside eating cookies or something. And I decide to go check up on grandpa and see if he needs any help. I don't know. I thought he was cleaning the shed and uh, I'm walking out there and grandpa has his, his, his back to me doing something on a table and I'm, I'm run up grandpa, grandpa, can I, can I help you with anything? And right as I get up there, grandpa had brought the cleaver right down on the table. And I looked at the table and it was my newly caught catfish completely disem, dis, disemboweled intestines hanging head cut off. And it was at that moment where that was when I, it snapped and in my head, I, that was like the first time I had seen something like that. And I cried for hours because I thought we were going to keep the catfish and name it and keep it as a pet. And I walked out there and I literally watched my grandfather. Because you have with catfish, you have to thump them I the literally, head first. And I then... literally watched my grandfather remove its head and I would see the, all, the in, all the intestines. Man, well that, okay, our fish tank. We had a pretty awesome fish tank. Yeah, that would have been. Yeah, we did have a good fish tank. We had a pretty awesome fish tank. We had a lot of cool fish. Again, I tried to expose you guys to different things. Snake, fish. But do you remember what finally killed the fish tank? Was that evil scourge of the African catfish. Yeah, those cichlids. They were, we had this the, giant little African catfish that we yeah, thought it was, was a good idea to put in there. Cat- they were cichlids. Something I don't know, but it it it, it was a big old big old big old fish, and it would just it would eat everything. Yeah, the best was your shrimp. So we didn't know what to do. Don't talk about Kyle like that. <laughs> I still remember his name. It was a good. That was a good little guy. I thought. I don't know. Well, you bought a really cool. It was a really cool. We, he shrimp. picked out a really cool little shrimp, named it. Because like my my favorite kind of aquatic things weren't the fish. It was like. The crust, the crustaceans. Well, we wouldn't just get normal things. No. We would get fun. I wanted fun, my kids to have different gl- things. Fun, cool, neon glowing fish. Yeah. Kyle, the shrimp. And I think and then was, we got cichlids. And then we got, yeah, this this big old thing. And Not knowing that what cichlids did we, are very I don't even re- re- I, don't, I don't even remember what we named it. I don't think we ever named those. We had two of them. Big old thing. Them. And it, oh, that thing! Yes, I, yes, I forgot about the African catfish. Oh no, I was thinking the cichlids, but yes, this is what my I mom felt does bad for it. This I is felt we were at the we were at the pet this store. This is what my mom does: is I will tell a story, and I know I'm right. She'd be like, "No, no, 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 no. yes." I the, forgot about the that one. Freaking African catfish! Yes, and it was all alone, and someone had brought it in or something, and I thought it was the coolest thing because it was like this big thing. And it, it, I mean, it was a cool it, fish. It, it was a cool fish, but we put it in there, <clears> and it. Did what Hitler had done. It just it killed it. It, it killed everything. It, it ate it Kyle. Literally and it, ate it, every. We had fish like another small. We had those small like neon little fish glowing it, fish. It, it ate those. We would wake up and in the morning we would go to the tank and the snail shells were floating. Yeah, it pretty much it ate would just everything. Suck the sna- so now I'm like, yeah, it killed all the snails. Everything. Yeah. The only thing left was the placostomus because it yeah, was because it, it was, was too big. Too big. <laughs> So now I'm like, well, we we just put fish Hitler into our fish tank, <laughs> yeah, and now we have to do deal with fish with fish Hitler. Can't so, remember it finally died. Yep. So one, so it would sleep a lot, and yeah. it would sleep in the corner. So one day, we kind of noticed that it's like it really hasn't moved recently. So mom was like. Look back there and, and just see if he's breathing. And if you're just looking at the fish tank normally, you would just see his normal body. But when I finally got my head back there, his entire rib cage was just open and decaying. It was the no, gnarliest it wasn't thing. That yes, it was. Bad. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. It was the gnarliest thing I'd ever seen, other than my grandpa killing my own catfish. He hadn't been sitting there that long. And dad, and that's when we were like, all right. And dad grabbed a glove and just. Tossed them into the trash can out. No, well, that's outside. not what we did because that's the best part is whenever what, what, the fish would die, what, we would, oh dear. <laughs> we would put them out by the peeing tree. Yeah, and and then they would go to heaven because the next day they'd be gone. What's the? And so we would tell the boys that we'd put them out by the tree, what's and then the, God would take them away. And miraculously, every morning they were just gone. What's the peeing tree? 
Well, it was where you would pee on. It was also the tree you got pee. But, but here's was the story the was. perfect Do you know tree. how they got to heaven? Cats. Because the cats would come overnight and then eat them. And, but the boys just knew that they would put them by the tree. The so peeing God tree was a, was a very special tree because the way that Well, it was a big enough tree. That you could hide behind it. Well, plus, okay, not, let's let hold on. Let's let's let's. And it had like a little like. Let's give it had some like an context. Indention in it. Let's give some context. We lived in the country, all right. So, which is another good story about you. Police department. We were in. It's in the. It's in the country. It's not like we're we're peeing outside in the city. But uh, you know, this tree had the perfect. The root. Grew it was in the old, in a, in, was, a, in a in a the, the 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 base of the tree grew in such a way that it had this one rivet in it that she was shaped like a like like well and it was like a, a tree. It was one of the original trees of so the farm. It was the peeing tree. Was and me and my little brother would water it every day. Um and yeah and then it had to get cut down and roots got too close to the house and but but and when you live in the country you pee outside oh, all yeah. the time. Um, that's just what you do. But then, so yeah, we had that fish, and I think I think that's what finally kind of all right. Let's, you know, I, I I I. Then we went to the cichlids after that, and I can't even remember what the cichlids were. They were those like round, big. They were like this big. Did they have the big eyes. No, Sid? that I forgot about Sid. The those things fish. were creepy. Yeah. Um, and then we had a snake. We had a snake. Well, Lucy, we truly had. A very a ball python. Yeah, it was a ball python. I loved that snake. It was fun. I mean, it like, would go on all the. It would come to the class a lot. Too. Yeah, we would bring it to first and second grade and put it on kids' shoulders and heads and stuff. And Lucy would like go through my button shirt. Lucy was awesome. Uh, really, really cool. We used to play what we called uh, gladiator, where yeah, that was always to fun. feed the snake. And again, no, Gladiator wasn't the snake, though. Gladiator, you're right, you're right. We you're did right. leftover. We did Coliseum. Well, the, the, you had to prove it by the snake would eat live mice. So to feed the snake, we would have to take a trip to Petco, buy three, four mice live. Well, we'd usually buy like two or three. Yeah. Because then, because it, it would eat anywhere from one to three. You just never knew what it was in the so mood for that. We day. had a special cage for it. Like a box, like a, a cage thing, and we would. That was a cool would, one. I remember it was would, really tall. And we big. would take Lucy out and put him into that box, into that cage. Oh, the feeding box! And yeah. we would drop in the mice one by one. And uh, when I was probably ten, Declan was eight years old, and we would just we we me and Declan would fight over who was going to be the one to pick up the mice by its head and drop it into the cage. And but you, he would always leave though. Cause he didn't want to actually yeah, see it. Declan, he, you would like to watch oh, the yeah. whole thing. Happen. Oh yeah. Because Lucy, you know, snakes are, snakes are. Cause the mice were cute and Declan felt bad for them. Snakes are blind inherently. They, they, they see by taste and smell with their tongue. You would drop it in and, and it was very cool. It was a cool hunting from thing, a, from watching a, it from hunt. a very young age. I got to watch how, those animals, you know, actually do what they do. And, and he would, he, he would smell the air and look, find the mice. And then all of a sudden just attacks and mm -hmm. just squeezes the mouse. And the mice that we had left, we would just throw outside to no, the, to, uh, we, well, when you live on a farm, there's lots of outside cats. And so yeah. we would go out and say, get it, get it, get it, get it. Get it. And then the cats would all come running up and then they'd all be sitting there. And then we would drop the mouse and see. Just, we would just and we would swing the mouse. Who would who would and they would all play with it first, and then their oh, yeah. one cat would be victorious and get the treat. Yeah, but we would call it the Coliseum fights. We had this one outside cat named Tiger, yeah. and Tiger found a, a mouse one time. Yeah, that and I we about we that. we were all sitting in the living room watching TV, and we just hearing this thud thud, and we're all like, yeah. oh. <laughs> That Lars. scared Lars. Sorry, Lars. And we we we, we, we couldn't were figure all out like, what the sound is was. Someone trying to knock, and we finally deduced the window it was coming from. We looked out, and it was it was the door, the glass door. It, it was just, it was the cat tiger, with its own mouth throwing a mouse. It was bringing us a prize. At, it was proud of itself at the door to show us. And then finally, when we acknowledge, you're like, oh, wow, good job. You got then, a mouse. And then he ate it. But yeah. he wanted to make sure he brought us that mouse to show us that I am a good mouser. Yeah. I'll never. That's I, I forgot about that. We had like 20 cats outside, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We Easily. had a lot. 
Um, in a farm, you go anywhere from yeah. you'll have five cats and then you'll have 30 but and then you'll have seven. The saddest then. part about that is that you have so many of these cats outside that you also you you also see through uh, them from life to death. There was one time we were ex- we were excavating one of our old barns, which uh, obviously, you know, me and Declan weren't really allowed to go into just because of the nature of the barns. They're dangerous. Well, old. it was an old hundred year old yeah. barn and it was lots of down. rusty, sharp things. And we were walking through and uh, it was so sad. I, I don't even want to bring it up. But it was like it was a full cat skeleton with a broken. There was multiple with cat a, skeletons with, in there. But th- but the. This one was like perfect. Yeah. It was a full cat skeleton with a broken femur. Basically, mean and we think it was Garf. It was Garfield because it it was a huge rib, huge rib cage. It well, because they would they would go in there and die. Yeah. But it, it broke its leg and couldn't go anywhere, so it starved to death. And then yeah. well, I guess as it got hit by a car and then went in there. To and die. then uh, we had that one cat that climbed on top of the barn. Oh, I forgot about that. We made John Delaney go these up there barns, and get it in the middle of a windstorm. I still feel bad about this These barns are huge, guys. Oh, I just said a name again, didn't it's, I? It's, it's fine. These barns are huge. You have to understand that these barns are taller than our house. And one day we look outside. And a it cat was a corn is, crib. It was a corn crib. And a cat's on the roof. We could not tell you how it got up there. Well, now that we tore that corn crib down, I know exactly how it got up there. And if I'd have known through what the, I knew, the chicken feed. It, it went through the, yeah, the green um, But feed. it was like, how on earth? So we had our, our neighbor come and, and get it down for us. A whole lot of, whole lot of things like, things like that. Um, that, that, now that, that, that was a lot of the child, of the childhood. Um, um, you know. Um, since we're on the subject, you know, Pokemon, me being younger, I mean, when did that start? And it was probably because of my cousin Zane. It was right? Zane, yeah. yeah. Because you were, he, he he gave you, he collected Pokemon cards. He was what? Zane's what? 10 years older than you? No. Yeah, yeah maybe. I still have. He was like eight or nine. Anyway, card. he was huge. I've been buying Pokemon cards for so long because I bought them for Zane prior to you. And then she had me. And then Zane gave you, you always idolized Zane and looked up oh, yeah. to Zane. And then I remember Zane, Zane, Zane gave cool, you Pokemon cards. He was the cool older cool cousin. cousin that played video games. And I was like, oh, it's so cool. Yeah. Aleska was the loving, Singer. cool, old, sweet cousin that just wanted to take care of you and be sweet to you. It's, and then Zane was the cool, fun it's kind boy of funny. cousin. It's kind of funny, you know, not, now that I think of it. I had I I got a little bit of them both in me. I've got yep. I really like you know video games and nerdy stuff, but I'm also a professionally trained opera singer. You were very much influenced by wow. both of your older cousins. That's funny. Yep. That's funny. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. I've but I've, yeah, Zane gave you Pokemon cards, yeah. and then that's what started it. Yeah. I uh, but you know that you know I I I know I brought this up before on on the podcast, but like, I mean. Really, like I am a professional opera singer. I mean, I uh, mm-hmm. I perf- I trained and performed, per- you know, classically for a good decade. Mm-hmm. Started when I was eight, and you know, and the way I fell upon that's the funniest thing. Was the bully the the baseball so the baseball swimming bully? So G again, yeah. the the kid who uh, kept yelling at the baseball game. But but that's that kid though. He was a bully, but yet there was always this. Friendship and you, this really weird friendship, and really, the and the reason was because clearly bullying was the only thing he really knew. But at the same time, deep down, he still wanted to have friends. Yeah. But him being so young and as, clearly, as much of a bully he was, he was also a good friend. Such a weird case. It, it, it is. I just I even re- re- remember me, you and I talking about it when I was much younger. Like it makes no sense. But one day, you know, he was a G did theater and I had never done theater up until you were this eight. point. Very, very young. And, you know, G's mom had reached out to mom and said, hey, there's this odd, there's this audition. They're hiring like a bunch of like a bunch of kids. Like it, there really isn't a limit to it. Um, might as well bring Celestino over and just have him audition. Just see if he likes it. 
So mom kind of signed me up. We went ahead and went over there. I'm not kidding you guys. It was literally auditioning to play a shadow. Mm-hmm. You know how we 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 make it was those, Hansel and Gretel. You 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 know how we make those jokes of like you know oh yeah the You're kid a rock. like the kid who <laughs> played the bush. I played something that wasn't even physical. It was literally a shadow, because all we did. But there was, was the choir shadow, so you guys would sing. All we did was just we would come from the back of the house and just crawl up on the stage and then run back. Um. So we're there at the odd at the odd at the audition. Obviously, I had sang bef- sang beef uh, before, and I'm aud- I'm auditioning and I'm singing blah 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 whatever. And uh, eventually, this man approached. Well, you me. no, you had huh? he was the he was a director, but yeah. you guys did the show, and it was after the last performance. Was it after? Yes, it was okay. after the last performance when he came up to thank us for bringing you to all the rehearsals. And so everything. yeah, it it it. it was after the last performance and uh let's just let's just let's just call him robert so robert he was he is a a very esteemed a very esteemed intelligent professor of opera and performance and study at this college university yeah and again i was eight i was eight years old and basically robert had said to mom and dad uh i want to bring your kid on as kind of my student well, he came up no he came up to me after the last show and he goes and he you know we had gotten close to him because we yeah. brought you to practice every night he came up and he goes i just i want to take him on as a student because honestly anybody with the name celestino needs to sing opera and, and we kind of chuckled about it and that was it you obviously know, opera uh, I mean, uh, you had a natural gift. For opera it was net was never on my radar. No, but you had a natural gift for the operatic for, voice. for for singing and and stuff like that and and you know I don't really and you had remember. a good work ethic. That was the biggest thing he noticed. Oh, I've I've always had a good work ethic, but I never really knew when it had, it had happened. I I don't even remember my re- my initial response to it. I just said. Sure, because what I was eight years old. Mm-hmm. Did did I really have that much decision making experience at that point? Um, and it was history. Like since then, I just I studied so and he trained taught you for ten years. Yeah, for 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 every for 10, week for ten years, and I did all these shows and operas. Oh my gosh, and musicals. I, that's the one thing I'm not going to lie. I miss the most well, is theater. Of course, because I mean, the theater. Even, even if I did theater here, you wouldn't be able to come see it, you know? So, uh, yeah, but I would. We would. Yeah. You know, we would. But I just, I miss that. I miss, Oh yeah. you know, the people and, then, yeah. and everybody just like, because you were so young. I remember dropping you off at the university at eight with the college students and with adults and you not knowing these people. And I'm like, oh my gosh. But I had no problem with it. It was I'm like Lisa's I mean, dad, and now you can say his name because no yeah, one would know, yeah. but his dad, remember him? Oh, yeah. He would be like, I'll take him home. It's okay. And. And he was just Amazing. this neat guy. That was Pirates of Penzance. Yeah. That was probably my all-time favorite. I mean, look. Don't, I think Pirates like, of Penzance was my favorite. Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't do, like, I, I wouldn't ne- necessarily jump out of the couch to do theater now, but I still, it, it, I absolutely loved it. There, there, there was certainly something special about it, but my heart was set on more of the technical stuff. And, and you know, not even the technical but stuff. But see, even in that, again, I exposed you to things there because I yeah. remember the the going guy, the guy that was the um the, the, director. the head tech guy. Yeah. And he said, "Hey, Celestino kind of likes this stuff." I'm like, "Great!" So he, you, I would drop you off at the mm-hmm. university, and he, I can't remember what the guy's yeah. name was, but he would show you how to hook up the lighting and all that yeah. stuff. And you worked oh, yeah. with him a couple of times. So I wanted you to be exposed to all aspects of the oh, theater. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, it's like, you know, I I wanted to go more of the routes of the modern contemporary kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, but the only reason I had stopped lessons with with Robert was because well, I moved. had to move. Yeah, you I moved I, here. And, you know, and it, that 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 was kind of odd because I had seen Robert every day of my life for like 10. Yeah. Not, sorry, not not every day, well, but like, like <clears throat> every week. Yeah, but every for months at a if, time, you would mm-hmm. be with him every day for rehearsals. For 10 years. Really, he just kind of became like almost like a an, family, almost like an uncle. Yeah. You know, to the point where um, when I had finally moved, that's when I finally realized like, oh, my gosh, like he this this actually feels like I'm leaving a family member. Yeah, it was. I was actually sad oh, yeah. because I knew I wouldn't be. We all were, to see you him. know, but 
you know, he, me and him talk probably once every six months, you know, just kind of catch up and, and whatnot. Um, but, you know, singing, like, you know, singing is what I, I do best. And, uh, but you know, there are things now that, 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 that bring me more joy and I'm, I'm always going to be singing, but currently right now, as I'm 21 years old, my, my focus is, okay, where is the money? It's but not had- in singing right now, but, but in the future, I can turn what I'm doing right now and bring it all back. But all those people were just a good influence yeah. on you and you yeah. were. You were always the only kid. Mm-hmm. There were you and the one, the, the one boy. But for the most part, yeah. yeah, you were just a mainstay there. And there was like two or three of you kids that grew up together. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, had kids... nothing in common with each other, but you grew up together and friends. Oh yeah, no. The... And then I did theater in high school, and that was awesome. Yeah. I mean, my favorite. So you know, the high school that I went to uh, was pretty freaking awesome. It kind of kind of deteriorated as i got older it's kind of how some things go um especially just with the times we we live in now but um you know what we did in high school was there were three shows a year there was this the fall play the winter shakespeare and the spring musical the f- yeah and i did every single one since freshman year um and you know the ones i enjoyed the most were the fall play the one X, and even the one X no, I never did the one X. Yeah, you but, did. No, 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 no. But uh, the fall play and and the winter Shakespeare. I, I, I oh, I, the fall play that would have been like the the one with the teddy bear. Right? Yes, um, yes. What was that yes, one? Yes, yes. So what was that? I I could not even tell you if there was a gun to my head. Oh my but gosh. that that that's where I kind of learned like acting is actually a lot more fun than like singing and acting because there's so much more emotion and things to do in in acting. And my favorite, my favorite play I had ever done in my life was Much Ado About Nothing, which was a Shakespeare play. I played this very goofy character. And that's when I really, really looked inside myself and really found the love for it. Because when I first was doing it, when we first all got the scripts and stuff like that, I, I, I really wasn't that good. Then I met with Mr. T. Mm-hmm. And he, for Shakespeare, especially, and he totally just he ruined my world in the best way. He he took everything that I had known and just ripped it out and gave me a whole new perspective. And I came to rehearsal the next day because even my friends, even Mr. W knew that he's not really doing he's not really finding the character. I came back the next day. Everything I did was perf. It was um, it was so so much fun. Um, I have so many great memories from high school, and uh, unfortunately, some things I can't re- that that kind of have, uh, they kind of have an expiration date to them. It's still pretty fresh. Uh, some some of the stories that I have, so give it maybe a year or so, and I can finally tell those stories. But but man, it, the 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 high school because it it was all mom that that had put me in this high in this high in this high school. It was uh. A high school in a neighboring city. Uh, I could have just gone to the high school in the town that I had been going. And it's a great there, school too. There were just it's just there. It's not that there were no opportunities there. No, and there were more. There were more yes. opportunities at this El Paso. Other one. El Paso only had show choir, which is incredible, yeah. and it's an incredible program. But, but that's really all they have. They have like a little musical does, or yeah. a little play. But I knew that you're you wanted more with the arts in, in arts. And just, just everything. You I, I have just, the arts, and that's why yeah. I suggested it. So, hey. you know, at first I was like, no, Mom, I don't want to leave, blah, 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 blah. But she finally convinced me, and I had started going there. Uh, unfortunately, that was the height of, like, my foot stuff. I I talked about this bef- 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 before, but I had to have these two major surgeries on the bottoms of my feet. But that um, only affected marching band because then it it healed after and, that. Oh man, marching band was my favorite extracurricular. But only because ever. of that foot thing. If it hadn't been for that, you'd have been playing. I would have been playing the saxophone marching. marching no. But instead, you got put in the pit and you yeah. loved it. 
It was your favorite part yeah. of high school, I think. High school was Don't you think? Great. I mean, I think oh, yeah. of all the, oh, yeah. the you loved all the theaters and the oh, shows, yeah. but I think marching band is probably your favorite memory. Hands down. It was the best. You got to go on a cruise into the Bahamas your freshman oh, year with the marching band. That you was got to incredible. go to New York. That, that was, was more of the choir though, Just wasn't it? Me and my friends going to the going to the Bahamas. It was our first cruise. Me, Evan, and I forget who else, we would have this perimeter that they set for us. We would just go straight through it and just explore. Oh my gosh. But see those things you wouldn't have experienced if you'd stayed at home. Oh yeah. And same thing with New York. (laughs) New York was our oyster, man. We, we, oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, well, because they let you guys explore oh, yeah. on your own and yeah. be adults. And they had just said, "All right, go." Well, and when so- you were into the school, you have to understand the way yeah. the school was run by the university. So you were mm-hmm. you were treated as a college student freshman year in high school, and yeah, you just you just had to grow up. So, you know, I I get close to the end of high school. Mm-hmm. Dance. Remember, I made you do dance class. Okay. So. <laughs> When you look what was at that called? Hold on. When you look at me, what are some words that come to your mind? <gasps> but I again I exposed Stoic, you to every aspect of things. Handsome. Perhaps bold. Sexy if you're brave. One thing you would not think is that I have three years of professional training in ballet. And dance. Ballet. Not just ballet, but dance. Ballet. What was it called, though? Orcasus. Orcasus. Wow, I Orcasus. have been, I have three years of training in the At university level, because that was a university class. That wasn't. Now, if you know me in the real world, you're probably going to ask me about this. After Pirates of Penzance, do a swan. See, you were meant to do ballet. I did ballet, and uh, this, this might come as a shocker to you guys. Um. I would be better at building a car from scratch than ballet. I still did it. The whole the whole class wasn't ballet, but it was a great excuse to be around 97 uh other girls wearing dance attire with three of my guy friends and not having to do boring PE. Yeah. Of course we were going to take that. So me and these two other guys, it was like only two other guys in there we just did it because we're like it's we we can do it at seven at at seven in the morning we don't have to do stupid uh pe we are literally surrounded by almost 100 girls our age in leah in like lee in like leotards uh yeah so we did that and it was kind of fun because we were the exception like all of the girls they were all trained ri- like rigorously they were dance trained but then and then us three guys came along and the teacher kind of were like all right see if you guys can bounce on one on one foot you know well, one of the one of the shows you did the music for oh yeah i uh i produced this. she let you do other things not it, just dance it, it it was my first song that i ever wrote actually mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. I, it wasn't that great but for a first ever song i was really proud of it I had wrote it uh, for these people because it was also that was when my feet that was mm-hmm. you my, couldn't dance so she that, gave you that, that was my second foot surgery. Yep. So uh, I did that 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 was awesome. Oh man, do you remember uh, the YouTube channel that I started with my original songs? Was that, that Hi Hat Harry? I made on Garage. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hi Hat Harry. And you were going to play musical snippets. Did you remember okay. Hi-Hat Harry? It wasn't called a Hi-Hat Harry. <laughs> what was Harry. it called? Hold on. I'm, I'm trying to think if I can, <laughs> if I can find a, a way to... to you got to put Hi-Hat I Harry really, on for people to see it. I, I really need to find a way where I, I can play video so we can watch it together right here. But, but where, that, that's not what even... What was its name, though? Listen, Mom. That was, that's not even related to what we're talking about. <laughs> what was his name? So... What was his name? I was a quirky kid <laughs> and uh, a little retarded. And uh, when I was younger, I just started playing sax. Well, that was basically when Instagram finally 
just started, started getting big. And I had made an account, and I would always post the 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 dumbest things ever. I I, I posted this video. Now look, I'm a I'm a pretty big guy now, but when I was younger, like I was obese. Like I was. Where does that tell me, little kid? I was huge. You were not huge. Very very fat, and I had the most unflattering camera angle. Of me wearing a blue shirt and a and a fedora, fedora. and uh, and I took a video of me saying, uh, "Hey guys, this is Weird Hat Weird Hat Henry, and I'm gonna be playing these these quick songs every every day." Blah 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 blah. And we just we still laugh about it. I I I never made a song. It's still on Instagram, isn't it? No, I I have it. No, I have it archived. Oh. So it's 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 not on my page, but it's also not deleted. Yeah, it needs to be on your page forever. It really doesn't. Um, That's still one of my favorite things. Really, 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 really doesn't. Um, yeah, no, we uh, and you know, speaking of which, that kind of that reminds me of a story. You know, I remember where I I I, I was when I first got in, in first got Instagram. Um, it was at the. Um, do you remember whose house we were at? I. Oh, and, okay. And, oh, yeah, yeah, so S and G's. S and G. Yeah, weren't yeah, that the key? yeah, yeah. So we were at the uh, our, our, our friend's place, and uh, this was when this was the first time in my life where I really like thought to myself, "Do I hit adults?" Because we were about to go swimming. They had a pool, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, like like I am today, I'm I'm much much less today. But I was very self conscious about my body. That was the main reason people made fun of me. It was for my stutters because I had boobs. Uh, we're still sprouting the A cups, going strong, and uh, I didn't want to take off my shirt because you know I don't want people to. Look, even though it was friends, I I still didn't want anybody to look at me because that's what I always got bullied for. So. Uh, I was talking to my friend's mom, you know, I was, you know, telling her, I'm, I'm really scared. I'm really nervous. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know where she learned to be a, a mother. She needed her degree revoked. She looked me right in the eyes and she said, well, don't be ashamed of your, of your, uh, don't be ashamed to take your, take your shirt off. There are girls your age that wish they had boobs like yours. If I, I could have owned that. a gun at that point, that was the... I just stood there. I'm like, what? You don't, you don't say that to a kid. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Man. Lots of, uh, lots of good stuff, really. Um, what else? What else? What? There's just... There's thinking. What else is, is there to talk about? I don't know. But there was a story. You were telling a story about the whole thing. I just told it. Oh, was that the story you were telling yeah. with? Oh, okay. Where she just said, girls wish yeah. they had boobs like yours. I forgot about that. I do remember. But Instagram, that's where actually yeah. that day was the day that we were talking about, well, should we let the kids have it? Are they old enough? Yeah. And I'm like, well, I'll monitor it. So I'm fine. If And she was not going to let her kids have it. Oh, yeah. And I said, well, I trust him. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, so so mom's here. She, uh, t- for the record, today's Saturday, and she got here on Wednesday. On Wednesday, really, n- just a nothing but a rip roaring time we've had so far. Um, we've done exciting things like we went to Costco. That was fun. Uh, we got gas. Um, and today we are gonna go uh pawn shop hopping. So truly things you can only do in Florida. Um, I'm excited about that. And uh, you leave tomorrow, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and. Because uh, well, it's Easter. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. why I came down. Yeah. Yeah, guys, look, um, we're going to we're going to call it at that. Um, Mom, do you have anything uh, else to say? Absolutely not. Yes, you do. Love Come you. on. Work with me here. Love you. All right. That's perfect. And. Uh, <laughs> 
just want to thank you guys for uh, for coming by the Something Cafe. Uh, just to remind you guys that you can, uh, and, and Mom is a huge fan of the pod of the podcast. What's your uh, which episode is your favorite? Oh, the first one. Okay, good job. No, it is. It was. I, it was a couple times I actually laughed out loud, you, and I was in a public setting and stipulations. That's love right there, guys. Look, you won't get this anywhere else but the Something Cafe. Just to rem- just to remind you, we are on Apple Podcasts. We're on YouTube. We're on Spotify. I don't know if the video is on Apple Podcasts. But the video is on Spotify and YouTube, obviously. Um, I've got another little series coming out soon. Uh, I really I appreciate you guys watching. Please. Uh, Spay and neuter your pets. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Okay, good job. <laughs> um, <laughs> always spay and neuter your pets. Great, because um, you know I—that's the theme. I do always end episodes on that note. Um, go ahead and follow the accounts, on, especially on Spotify. Give it a five star rating. That helps me out a lot. Uh, Mitra, please sponsor me. And uh, look, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming by the Something Cafe. Say it, Mom. What? What I just said. Thank you for coming by the Something Cafe. In, in, into the microphone. Thank you for coming by the Something Cafe. That's how you do it. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next week.